Hi everyone, Tuesday evening. How is your day going? I'm gonna wait for just a few people to hop on here. I'm gonna invite Tabitha. Um, there we go. Nope. I was trying to add, pe uh, add people to the broadcast instead of just inviting them. Tabitha, hi, I was just going to invite you. You love my hair? Thank you. So there's a funny story about my hair. I just went outside. Um, I was going to do this video outside in my back. Aww, they're so sweet. Um, so nice. I was just going to do this video outside in my back, and I was on Ella's swing, which I love. It's so peaceful out there. And um, I look down, there's this little, like, hard shell black bug on me. I'm like, whatever, I fling it off, and it's there again. I fling it off. Well, then I realized, no, it's not the same bug. They're like on me, like they're, I saw, I think three or four on me at once. I was like, yeah. So anyway, when I was coming in, I made sure to like shake out my hair. And so now I feel like I look like a woolly mammoth, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So you are going to love this subject, Tabitha. I was going to invite you because this is something I did not know. And I'm wondering if you knew this. Okay. So I knew I was going to come on here to talk about medicine, pharmacia, because on my wall this week there's a discussion, I forget what I even posted, oh it was an article about little boys being drugged, like an entire, entire generations, um, that's funny, entire generations of boys being drugged for ADHD, boys being drugged just for being boys, right, and so anyway, it got into a discussion where somebody said, oh, I didn't know those were your beliefs because I had said something about, thank you, Penny. You guys are so sweet. I'm saying, I, you know, I said something about pharmacia, which is pharmaceuticals in the original language, pharmacia in the Bible, and we will get to that. But anyway, I knew I wanted to talk about it. I want to read because it's such a foreign concept, okay? We are... Born in this country with modern medicine, we are told that doctors you know, can be trusted, that um, Ada is demonic, deliverance set you free. What is, oh, ADHD. I thought Ada was a name. I'm like, who's Ada? And what did I say about that? Um, so anyway, I knew I was going to talk about pharmacia, but I decided I was gonna just do a little bit of digging into where modern medicine came from. Hang on one sec. Do you need me? Okay. Hold please. My husband's carrying something heavy. So I'll be right back. I'm live. Yeah. Oh, where are we going? Okay, sorry guys. He could, he was, he's building a table. Here, put my brother on meds. Oh gosh, that's awesome, Lindsay. Um, okay, so anyway, I knew that I wanted to do just a little bit of research um, to just kind of figure out. Okay, where where did the switch happen? Where did we go from? Biblical medicine, natural medicine, where God is telling people to put figs on the king's boils, and Jesus is using mud and water, and God is saying, cleanse with hyssop, and like, where did the switch happen from, you know, biblical medicine to Native American medicine, which was, again, herbs, earth, you know, creation, plants, Fruit, food, fruits and veggies. Where did, where did the switch happen? So I decided I was going to, to Google and I cannot believe, oh Monica, that's so awesome. I cannot believe what I found. I cannot believe I have not heard this before. I cannot believe it. So the Rockefeller family, do you guys know who the Rockefeller family is? The richest, one of the richest families in the whole world. They are at the forefront of the New World Order, Antichrist Illuminati. This is not conspiracy theory. This is the truth. There are 13 Illuminati bloodlines. 
so-called Illuminati bloodlines, royal bloodlines. Um, it's they, they inbreed to keep their bloodline what they consider pure. Uh, it's a Luciferian bloodline. They are the elite. Thank you, Tabitha. Anyway, did you know that John D. and the Rothschilds, yes, did you know that John D. Rockefeller is responsible for our modern medicine, for the way that we do things, for American medicine? The Rockefeller family, the Luciferian Rockefeller, as if, okay? So these people that just think that I'm nuts for coming against Pharmakia, um, you know, as if um, it's not enough to for it to be in the Bible as witchcraft. They need more evidence, okay? So I'm going to read you that evidence right now, all right? So I'm not going to read this whole article because it's it's very it's very long. But this John D. Rockefeller, um, he was selling. He was considered a quack physician selling bottles of creosote to cancer patients for twenty five dollars a piece. The family, as might be expected, moved frequently after the war. While John D. was getting started in the oil business, a large, growing Jewish German immigrant family was struggling to get along in Louisville, Kentucky. It's interesting because Illuminati um, goes hand in hand with the, oh, what is the word? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's a certain kind of Jewish heritage that is supposed to be not, not authentically, not the Hebrews of the Bible, but like false Jews. Oh, what are they called? If you ever do like 23 and Me, it's, it's, it begins with an A and there's a K in there. Anybody know? If you guys put it in there, that'd be helpful. Anyway, um, they test you. Your, if you ever do your DNA to find out your heritage, this is in there. Ask any Jews. I'm saying it wrong, but it's something like that. Anyway, um, so this makes sense to me that he connected with this Jewish German immigrant family. Anyway, um, two of Mr. and Mrs. Oh. Flexner, seven children, ultimately, so this Flexner family partnered with the Rockefellers to revolutionize medical education and practice in America. No, it's not rabbitic. Um, all right, let me Google it. Ask, uh, ask uh, something Jews. Ask uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> ask a uh, I got it wrong, but maybe it'll come up. Ashkenazi Jews. Ashkenazi Jews are popular, popularly contrasted with Sephardi Jews, also called Sephardim, who descended from the Jews who settled in the Iberian Peninsula, and Mizrahi Jews, who descended from the Jews who remained in the Middle East. So anyway, these Ashkenazi Jews, are cons they're supposed to be kind of like false Jews. That's a whole separate topic. Thank you, Ashkenazi. Thank you, exactly. Shell says, for your awesome work, Sherry Oler. Aw, Eve, thanks. Okay, so let me go back here because I want to, to finish reading this because it's good. Okay, Simon, the older of the pair, was renowned pathologist and bacteriologist recruited from the medical facility, I'm sorry, medical faculty at John Hopkins University in 1903. He organized the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research, now Rockefeller University. Why don't they just call it Lucifer University or Illuminati University? So... Um, where he later pioneered a technique for isolating the polio virus. This work contributed to directly, directly to the latter development of a vaccine for this dreaded disease. Right. Well, they shot a bunch of people uh, with this polio virus and, as, and used them as human experiments. Why? Because they're connected to the Illuminati, uh, satanic ritual abuse, and this is what they do. And they crippled a ton of people, and the polio virus is a disaster. Look at the research. Everybody, they, they want us to believe that the polio vaccine eradicated the polio virus. That's a lie. That's a lie. It was a disaster, and it, and it crippled a lot of people. Um, all right, his younger brother, Abraham, initially settled on a career in education, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's the important part. 
The Flexner Report presented a scathing critique of the state of medical education at the time. It concluded that 120 of the weaker American medical schools, the weaker American medical schools should be merged or closed, leaving just 32 in operation. It's hard to argue with this stern prescription, giving the president of Harvard's view that the ignorance and general incompetency of the average graduate of American medical schools at the time when he receives a degree which turns him loose on the community is something horrible to contemplate. contemplate. So what they were saying is they wanted to take it exactly and hygiene, hygiene practices and indoor plumbing. Yes. So what they were saying is, you know, Rockefeller comes along, he's got all this money, they're going to do it his way and they're going to eradicate all other types of medical practice in America and start only teaching this particular type of medicine. And they are doing that by saying that just like they do this today, it's media. It, they put out these messages that this is bad, this is good. These people are idiots, these people are smart. Right now, Christians are the idiots, right? We knew this was coming. So anyway, um, in at this time when they were trying to eradicate all other medicine, why? So that they could make money, big pharma. They were putting out the message that, that everybody graduating were a danger to society. All right, the collision of a very real need for fundamental reform in medical education, the Flexner's avowed belief in the superiority of the John Hopkins model of medical training and Rockefeller's philanthropic ambitions created something like a perfect storm. This gets really interesting. With the hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in 1907, he poured into the new standardized approach to medical education. John D. could drive confusion and sinful competition out of American medicine just as he had done with the oil business. So he, a quack cancer doctor, Brought into the world, brought into the world a son who, with Flexner's brothers at his side, would standardize American medicine. Um, the boy ensured that there would be no place for an itinerant cancer doctor to sell a snake oil and then slip out of town, never to be seen again. Um, so, there's another part that I want to read. Oh, here we go. This is good. Um, interesting, though, that. It was his money, okay? So the Rockefellers, the Luciferian, get that in your head, Luciferian, money-hungry, $382 billion Rockefeller family decided that they were going to take over American medicine, put everybody that came against their view of medicine out of practice, out of commission, and they did it all because of money. Now listen, this is the good part. The approach favored at, favored at Hopkins and thus chosen to be elevated permanently above all others was called allopathy. Initially used as a slur against medical doctors, the term actually refers to the practice of healing through opposites. Keep that in mind. It says healing, healing through opposites. If the patient is retaining water, then a drug that promotes urination is the answer. If a persistent cough is the problem, then a cough suppressant is the answer. I am an allopath, and I think that allopathy has much to offer us all. All prescription drugs are allopathic medicines. Think about this. Rockefeller, the Illuminati Luciferian Rockefeller family starts modern medicine based on opposites. Oh my gosh. Like my mind, you know that emoji with the brain like exploding? This is where I'm at right now. People, we've got to get this. And I think everybody on here pretty much knows how I feel and we are, we are my people. You are my people. But I'm hoping some of those people from last night's conversation, I will. I will, Lindsay. Um, some of the people from yesterday's conversation, they just can't grasp it. When I showed them Pharmakia in the Bible, one of them said, okay, now at least I understand where you're coming from, but I completely disagree with you. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's fine. If you're watching this and you 
cannot wrap your mind around the fact that as Christians, we are not supposed to be taking pharmaceutical prescriptions. And people always say, this is the biggest argument. I almost said this earlier and I got distracted, so I'm glad uh, the Lord brought me back. But people always say, doctors are gifted. God has gifted doctors to give them intelligence and discoveries and God has gifted all these people to lead us to this modern medicine that they believe that God has done it. I'm like, listen, God has gifted engineers as well and always has and, and those very, those said engineers tried to build the Tower of Babel to get to heaven without God. So just because we see gifted doctors and gifted brains and intelligent people and gifted scientists working in the medical community, that does not at all point to the fact that it's God-given, that pharmaceuticals are God-given just because God creates intelligent people. Because intelligent people have overthrown God at every step of the way throughout the Bible. So that argument goes right out the window. And thank you, Tabitha. Here's the thing. I, I know some doctors. Their heart is right. They love the Lord. They want to help people. So what do they do? They go to med school. Who started the American Med School? The Luciferian Rockefeller family. If the Luciferian Rockefeller family started American Med School, shut all other med schools down so that they all had to teach this one way of allopathy, which is healing, they say, through opposites, but it doesn't heal. It does not heal. This is not the way that the Lord intended. I could just, I could talk about this for eight hours, guys. There's so much evidence, and I want you to get this. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, first of all, I pray that you would get this in the hands of the right people. You guys, share this video. I pray that you would get this in the hands of the right people, and then I pray as those people are listening, Lord, there is so much here, and the cloak that Satan has put over the eyes of the church regarding modern medicine is so thick and heavy. It's like layers upon layers upon layers of thick and heavy canvas that they just cannot see how they could possibly, how modern medicine could possibly be not your will. They cannot see, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus right now that that veil would be lifted. That you would remove the blinders so that they could see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ as it relates to how you intend to heal us. Okay, in Jesus' holy name. So listen, if you have, if you are retaining water, and allopathy, Rockefeller medicine, which is going to be my new name for pharmaceuticals, if Rockefeller medicine treats the opposite of that, you're retaining water, so therefore we're going to make you pee, what are they never doing? They're never looking at why you're retaining water. And this is, this is our modern medicine. They don't care why. They don't care the root. The way that God had... Uh, created our bodies is that when something goes wrong in our body it's a signal that something needs to be healed it needs to be healed spiritually first and then it needs to be healed physically second and he's given us many tools in nature to do that and he's given us many tools in Jesus Christ to do that they could care less about what the symptom is signaling they just want to treat the symptom. They're, it, they are stating it right here. Now, we say that all day long. Doctors don't heal anybody. They just treat the symptom with medicine, causing other symptoms, which then they treat with, treat with more medicine, which then causes other symptoms, which they treat with more medicine, right? So we can say this all day long, but it's actually the definition of the very medicine that is being taught in med school. So even if there's a Christian doctor that loves the Lord, that has a good heart, that wants to help people, if that Christian doctor enrolls in med school, they are being taught and practicing Rockefeller medicine, allopathy, treating by opposites. Let's read that again. Um, if the patient, uh, let's see. Uh, Initially used as a slur against medical doctors, the term actually refers to the practice of healing through opposites. If the patient is retaining water, then a drug that promotes urination is the answer. 
If a persistent cough is a problem, then a cough suppressant is the answer. I'm an allopath and I think allopathy has much to offer us all. All prescription drugs are allopathic medicines. Un unbelievable. And I need to go back and read everything that you're saying. Um, okay, listen. Uh, once relieved of its formerly beloved purgatives, leeches and lances, allopathy proved itself to be quite effective in addressing illnesses and injuries. It has given us laser eye surgery, titanium prosthetic hips, Viagra, heart transplants, cancer chemotherapy, Vioxx, insulin, the polio vaccine, Rogaine, coronary artery bypass surgery, MRIs, and thigh... Thaladomide. Allopathy has proven both its power and the damage it can do when used less than skillfully. It deserves a central role it now plays in our healthcare system. But in 1910, it was just one of many different approaches to health and healing. Unbelievable. Now listen to this. Thomsonian medicine was founded by Samuel Thompson. In, I'm sorry, 1769, and he died in 1843. A farmer and self-proclaimed root doctor, his approach relied heavily on Native American herbal remedies and sweat baths. Yes, why? Because Why did God make us sweat? Because when we sweat, we detox, right? We're getting rid of the things that aren't supposed to be in our body when we sweat. This is why saunas are amazing for healing. One of the reasons exercise is so good for healing, uh, another reason the sun is so good for healing. Thompson embraced a Jeffersonian belief in every man as his own doctor and was relent yes, thank you, and was relentlessly critical of the medical establishment of his time. Most of his criticisms criticisms were merited, but they enraged the regular doctors who opposed Thomasonian medicine at every turn. Unable to survive in America, the system was exported to England where it flourished and was taught at the four-year College of Herbal Medicine until 1970s. I don't know if you saw on my wall today, I announced, I will, I will post it, um, I will post it, Mandy. Um, I don't know if you saw my wall today, but I announced that I am starting uh, my studies, 150 credit hour study to get my diploma as a master herbologist which is so exciting. Herbalist, not herbologist, herbalist, master herbalist. Um, too many big words in this article, I guess. I'm getting tongue-tied. Uh, anyway, I'm so excited, but guess what? It's out of the UK. It's out of the UK. Makes perfect sense, right? Because when it was banished in America by the Rockefeller family, they took it, the system was exported to England where they taught at the four-year college of herbal medicine until the 1970s. Originally known as the American system of medicine, eclecticism encouraged the selection of therapies from a range of medical approaches, including allopathy, homopathy, naturopathy, and hydrotherapy. At its peak in the late 19th century, there were 10,000 eclectic physicians practicing throughout the United States. Um, with eight legitimate eclectic medical schools, its place seemed secure. It turned out that the eclectic were no match for the enduring enmity, meaning that the American Medical Association made all other practices of medicine at their enemy, which is exactly what Satan does right? Exactly what the Luciferians do. They want to take over. That is their goal, to take over the world. That's literally the Antichrist goal. It has been from the dawn of time. That is what Mystery Babylon is. It's the government system. It's the entertainment system. It's the medical system. It is their, it's the Luciferian system taking over the world. This is why God comes and takes, you know, we're the restrainer. Holy Spirit's the restrainer. Holy Spirit is in us. This is why he comes and he takes us out of the way in the last days, which we're right about there, because the Luciferians are taking over and the people want the Luciferians to take over. I mean, I'm, and anybody else who speaks out again against this, we are villainized. Is that what it's called? Vil vilified. We are, I can't talk tonight. We are vilified for speaking out against Mystery Babylon. If you say... You know, Disney is bad, Hollywood is bad, there it's all evil, there's pedophilia, you're seen as the crazy person and everybody runs, continues to run to the movies. If you say pharmaceuticals are anti-biblical, 
God put natural medicine in this earth and Jesus on a cross for our healing. Stop taking pharmaceuticals that cause side effects in your body and never heal you. They've created a customer that you, they want, want you to be on medicine forever. Don't take chemotherapy, take mushrooms that God created. You're seen as crazy. You are seen as crazy. However, it states right here, the very same plan. The Rockefellers, the Luciferian system, purposely put themselves as an enemy against all other medicine, and they took over. All right. Uh, it turned out that the eclectic were no match for the enduring enmity of the American Medical Association combined impact of Rockefeller Foundation money and the Flexner Report. The uh, Eclectic Medical College, the last school of eclectic medicine, closed its doors in 1939. The healthcare system we have today would be radically different if Rockefeller had opened his purse to the eclectics. Alas, it was not to be. He opened his purse to where he could control and make the most money. Um, and then it goes on. I will probably end there. Um, oh, oh, no, I'm not going to end there. Oh, it just keeps getting better and better. Homeopathy was a creation of Samuel Hahnemann, 1755 to 1843, a German physician who developed the law of similars into a practical medical philosophy. The word homeo homeopathy or homeopathy is derived from the Greek homo, homoios, which means similar in pathos suffer, suffering. Unlike allopaths, who believe that opposites should form the basis of therapy, homeopaths held that like cures like. Yes. This idea can be turned back to the doctrine of science. The quacky aspen leaf is similar to the tremor of the human hand and thus might be used as a treatment of that tremor. This is so cool to me. God's so amazing. The impetus for the formation of the AMA, American Medical Association, came largely from the desire to turn back the gains made by homeopathic doctors. Stop right there. Which medicine do we see in the Bible? Do we see allopathy or do we see homeopathy? It's simple. It, this is really simple. This concept is so simple. This truth, I should say, is so simple. One Connecticut physician was expelled from his local medical society for consulting with a homeopath, his wife. Apothecaries didn't like homeopathy either. Why? Can you guess? Because its practitioners insisted upon using tiny homeopathic doses, because that's all that's needed, and their prescriptions could rarely be filled at a profit. It's all about profit. Yes, mushrooms. Mushrooms um, helped heal my husband of cancer. The Lord told me which mushrooms to put him on, and his doctor said he'd never seen any anybody heal like my husband. Amazing. All right, even Mark Twain felt compelled to weigh in on the issues of homeopathy. Quoted in Harper's Magazine in 1890, he vouched for homeopathy and tweaked the nose of the medical establishment. The intro introduction of homeopathy forced the old school doctor to stir around and learn something of a rational nature about his business. Thank you. Oh, my coffee got cold because I'm yapping. Okay, let's read that quote again because this is huge. This is this quote right here. Oh my goodness. This is what I've been telling people. This is why when they're like, but doctors are so great and how can you say that? Doctors are so intelligent and they're so wonderful and they, they're so gifted. Okay, here's why. The introduction of homeopathy forced the old school doctor to sit, stir around and learn something of a rational nature about his business. <laughs> this is why what you see right now are doctors who are waking up. They are disillusioned with what they've learned in med school and what they're seeing in their practices. They're watching patients die. They're watching patients walk around like zombies on all the different meds. And every once in a while, one wakes up and says, oh my gosh, I have got to go find a better way. And what do they do? 
They stir around and learn something of a rational nature about their own business. Because when they come out of med school, they do not. When they come out of med school, they all they know is, I've been told that if I see A, give it B. And once I see B, give it C. And when I see C, give it D. But they've not stirred around and learned something of the nat, what does it say? The, the rational nature of the business of healing a body. They've just been told, if you see this, treat it with the opposite, period. That's what you do. You don't think, you don't let them question, you don't let the patients question. If you see A, give it B. If you see B, give it C, and so on and so forth. And it doesn't matter if they're on hundreds of meds, seeing five different doctors, just do it. That's what they know. And then when they wake up, I know a naturopath that woke up because she watched children. She was a pediatric cancer doctor and watched children dying at the hands of chemotherapy and radiation because the... Yeah, they're because the because allopathy treating the opposite of the symptom instead of healing where the symptom is coming from in the first place does not work. The only thing it does is line the pockets of the Rockefellers and everybody else involved. All right. Um, the, let's see. Despite a concerted, many would call it vengeful, campaign to destroy. Um, homeopathy, it continued to grow. By 1900, there were 22 homeopathic medical schools giving this discipline a respectable share of all the medical colleges operating at the time. Then came Flexner. Remember, Flexner was partnered with Rockefeller. In 1923, only two of these schools remained in operation. So it was 16 years. In 16 years, they put all but two out of business. By 1950, no homeopathic colleges remained in the U.S. Unreal. The battle had been joined as standard imposed and medical education in America was, on the whole, vastly improved, so they say. It was improved in their eyes because they managed to put everybody else out of business. Every other kind of medical uh, practice and teaching and learning other than the one that was lining their pockets. Unreal. Even though much was gained, we should not lose sight of what was lost. Alternative and potentially complementary systems of medical thought are important to our healthcare system in the same way that a diversity, diversity of species, species, species strengthens an ecosystem. The extinction, extinction of a bird or mammal is a loss, profound and enduring. The approaches that were eliminated during the rise of allopath, allopathy and others that have developed since then can, as Twain pointed out, make the existing system better. Um, it is time to let Doc Rockefeller rest in peace and begin exploring a new broader scope of health and healing. There are always and has, have always, there are and always have been Multiple legitimate approaches to the problem of alleviate, alleviating human suffering. Monopoly is bad medicine. Okay, the problem is we know that that's not going to happen. Now, there's, you know, people like me, hobbyists, natural medicine hobbyists, and then there's people like the doctor I just referred to who was watching, her, watching children die of cancer and thought there's got to be a better way, went out and did her own research and became, so she's a licensed, like a medical doctor that had gone through all the medical schools, and now she's also a naturopath because she did her own research and taught herself. Um, and so we know it's not going away. We know, you know, as I'm, my goal is not to make pharmacia go away. It's impossible. And how do I know it's impossible? Because the Bible says that in the end times, all nations are going to be led astray by what? Pharmacia. Your Bible says witchcraft, sorcery. It's the same thing. And so I know that because God says in the end times, everybody's going to be led astray by pharmacia, I know that I can't stop it. But what I can do is I can set captives free. And that is my goal. All right, really quickly, uh, if you've gotten this far and, ah, I need a charger. I'll be right back. All right, if you've gotten this far and you're like, okay, what she's saying is making sense, I want to see it in the Bible. 
Oh, I can't wait to go back and read all these comments. Um, so let's look up. It's so good. Oh, I got a sneeze. Let's look up. Pharmakia in the Bible. And I'm going to read you exactly what it says and where it talks about it, okay? So Pharmakia... Medication, and then in quotes it says pharmacy, i.e. by extension, magic, literally or figuratively, sorcery or witchcraft. That is the Strong's. Let's look at the Thayer's Greek Lexicon. All right. Um, the use or the administering of drugs. Poisoning. Sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. Come on! Oh my gosh. Tropically of the deceptions and seductions of idolatry. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. So let me look up the different scriptures that we can find it in. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. All right, let's do this one. Egypt, oh, and the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. Um... Exodus 8.18, and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not, so there were lice upon man and beast. Um, and then my one of the ones I quote all the time, Revelation 18.23, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, pharmakia, by thy administering of drugs, were all nations deceived. Guys, we need to get some people seeing this who are still living behind that very thick veil of blindness when it comes to the American medical industry business, whatever we want to call it. All it's doing is lining the pockets of the Illuminati, the Rockefellers, crazy, and all the other families that are involved. It's, it's just crazy to me that, I mean, in conversation, um, there's so many verses. I'm going to put this link as well. Actually, I'll, I'll take a screen. No, I'll put this link because that's theirs. So, and then you can look at the outline of biblical usage. Um, let's see, hide out. The use of administering. So in biblical usage, in biblical usage, it is used as um, the use or administering of drugs, poisoning, sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idol idolatry and fostered by it, and the deceptions and seductions of idolatry. That's... That, so we're not just looking at the root word as those definitions, but it's actually used in scripture as those definitions. Amazing. But I will post the link to this. This is on blueletterbible.com, so you can see the whole thing. You can see the Greek. You can see Strong's info. You can see um, it shows where it's, it's used two times. In King James, it's used two times as sorcery, one time as witchcraft. Then you can see the Thayer's Greek lexicon and the concordance results. So I'll, I'll post this link as well. And um, that's it. But guys, we got to share this because it's going it, it to just it's gonna take um, not references, translations. I hope you can figure out what I mean. I'll go back and read. Which references do you? Oh, um, I'm looking right now at Blue Letter Bible. And it's breaking down all of them. The Greek... 
and uh, King James. It shows where it's used in King James three different times, and then in the Greek lexicon. Um, so I'll put this link. But anyway, just based on how the, the conversations that I have about this with people, they always go the same way. They always say the same things. They always have the same confusion and blindness and aghastness that I, I know. But I wasn't. I was just reading from Strong. I was reading from Blue Letter Bible. It, I wasn't. Um, it's probably King James. Let me see. Yeah, King James. See, it says at the top. Um, so anyway, it's always the same. The, so the lies that people are believing are always the same. I've never met anybody who says anything different when it comes to me revealing that pharmaceuticals are not God's way. They always have the very same verbatim. They always come back and it's almost usually in order of what they say. Well, God created doctors and they're so intelligent. Well, I, I, they, and then they always say, well, I would die without my medicine. So I know God gave it to me and I'm so thankful. Listen, if you're on insulin and you, now you know what insulin is, that it's allopathy, that it's the opposite of what your body is doing, wouldn't you rather seek to know the cause and heal the source rather than just force your body with a chemical opposite? Like it just doesn't, it just blows me away. But anyway, the point being is that everybody I talk to about this, they have the same, like the same attack, the same belief, the same objections to this truth. And so I think Sometimes, you know, you just plant a seed. We get it out there, we plant a seed, and then somebody else comes along and plants a seed. Let this video be a seed. If you're watching this now, tonight, or any time in the future, let this be a seed by, by spreading it, tagging people in it, sharing it, even just loving it so that Facebook doesn't um, bury it, and uh, letting people see this discussion um, so that we can start to plant those seeds of truth so that people can get set free and... Uh, if you're on here and you want to join me, yay, hi, Laura, you're a new friend. Yay, hi, good to see you. Everybody else I kind of know on here already. Um, if you are watching this and you want to join my fight to set captives free from pharmacia by just spreading natural medicine and the use of natural medicine and the knowledge of natural medicine, um, the right supplements and, and food sources and everything else, uh, please just say me or message me and I will um, make room for you on my team. Well, thanks guys. Uh, let me go back and just see what everybody said. I think I saw a lot of them, but billionaires. <laughs> Mandy, billionaires. Yep, it's all about money. It's all witchcraft to kill us. Yep. It's mind control, ADHD meds. If anyone knows, I do. Yep. They're under the spells. It's so sad, Tabitha. They are under the spells. You feel like you can't do anything without the meds. It's awful. Oh my gosh, it's so demonic. Truth Shell said it's free. Thank you, Eve. Ashkenazi Jews. Those that say they're Jews, but they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. Tabitha, thank you for busting out that scripture. That's exactly it. That's what Rockefeller is. Those that say they are Jews, but they are not. Um, Iberian Peninsula. No idea what that means. Ashkenazi Jews. Thank you, Eve. <laughs> All right, the indoor plumbing. Yes, if people would only stop, stop spewing what you've been told about how vaccines saved everybody. It's not the truth. Do the real research. Mandy, that's the emoji I was talking about. My mind is blown. All right, no doctors are being brainwashed in school. They are, they're part of the B system. Mystery Babylon is the B system, guys. Pharmaceuticals equal B system, big time. Causes symptoms, not every, oh yeah. And exactly, not everyone uses their giftedness God's way. I don't understand how people don't see that. Um, um, causes symptoms, oh, I was just gonna say something. Oh, the scripture, uh, is it 2510 or 1025? Proverbs 1025, I think. 
that God gives wealth and gives no sorrow with it. Some, some versions say God gives blessing and gives no sorrow with it. That right there flies in the face of any pharmaceuticals because they always come with side effects. So people say that God gave them their pharmaceutical, but it's not from God if it has side effects because scripture says he doesn't do that. He gives blessing without sorrow. Um, and other people say, well, I know God saved me, this doctor saved me, this medicine saved me. Well, God is merciful and gracious. And so you better be thanking him for grace and mercy um, because he will meet you where you're at. If you're blinded, but you're crying out to him and, you, and, and this is all you know, um, you better believe he's merciful and gracious and he's not giving you what you deserve. Um, and I do believe that he is that good, but that doesn't mean that it's his will. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that we're not going to be held responsible for continuing to walk in blindness and turn a blind eye when you hear this message. We will be responsible because he's, he, he puts the truth out there and, and then we have to receive it. You know, like Paul said, go look up everything I'm telling you and search the scriptures to make sure what I'm telling you is the truth. Go, go ask Holy Spirit. Is Sherry a whack job or is this really in your scriptures? Is she crazy? Or was modern medicine and all the pharmaceuticals in my cabinet, were they invented by, and made by, and for the profits of a Luciferian family? Go ask him. He'll tell you. All right, you were getting ready to say that. Side effects, no symptoms. Yep, over the top. I know if you listen to them, they're ridiculous. Like suicidal thoughts and your arms may fall off and your heart's going to explode. And I mean, just nuts. Sleepwalking. Antidepressants are designed to completely kill serotonin, which is actually in the gut, amen, so you can never come off of them. Yep. Amen. In the gut. Everything starts in the gut. Everything starts in the gut. Dr. Jordan Rubin, I believe, 30 years ago, was the first one to say that we actually have a second brain in our gut, and that's our immune system. It all starts in the gut. This is why I love my greens, guys. This is why I love my greens, and this is why I'm so excited about this celery challenge. If you guys didn't hear me talking about it last night and you want to know what I'm doing, say celery, and you can jump on with me. It's so exciting. Uh, Anthony Williams, the medical medium, says that it is the most powerful medicine of our time, healing millions worldwide. What is it? Celery juice. And I have a brand new one, organic, convenient, and easy. Um, okay. Okay. Awesome, let's see, everything can be regulated through our gut, amen. What article are you reading? Okay, I will post that. I'll post the Blue Letter Bible link and I will post the article I was reading. Luke was a doctor. Luke was a doctor who when he met Jesus, he left his practice to follow Paul around being a scribe about the miracles, the supernatural miracles of Jesus. So everybody says that. Luke was a doctor. Like, I know you didn't say it that way. You're quoting what everybody says as part of their argument. Well, Luke was a doctor. Uh, Luke left his practice when he met Jesus. And he took up what? Miracles. <laughs> he was in the miracle business. And he wrote down miracles. <laughs> Followed Paul around writing miracles. All right. Thank you for sharing, Heather. Let's see. Doctors don't know about the drugs. The pharmacist is the one that has taught all of the chemical breakdowns of meds. My dad and sister are both pharmacists. Wow. They have seen so many times where they have had to call the doctor and let them know they can't mix the two or three medicines. Wow. That they have prescribed together. It will kill the patient or cause a horrible reaction. Unbelievable. All right. Let's see. No God told me the truth. It was because you were trusting him for healing. Oh, idolatry. Isn't that interesting that it has its root meaning in idolatry. Hi. <laughs> huh? I'm wrapping it up right now. One of these days he's going to get on camera with me and tell his testimony. I've been dropping hints. So one of these days he's going to take me up on it. All right. Uh, what verse? Let's see. And then it makes sense. It's Tabitha Smith. Yeah. If you're diabetic, you have self-hate roots, and you need to find out when it came in and let Jesus heal you. Amen, amen, amen. Not quite often, but never say anything. Laura, that's so just encouraging. Sometimes I feel like it's just my same three friends. So thank you for saying so and for speaking up tonight, and God bless you. 
I had an article about a man killing a five-week-old baby on his ADH med, AD, ADHD meds. That is horrible. You ordered it. Celery? You ordered celery? Awesome. Oh, sorry, Heather. Yeah, please. We believe all sin is rooted in idolatry. For sure. That makes perfect sense. All right, guys. I think I read all the comment, comments, and I just thank you, and, and the Lord just bless you, and shout it from the rooftops. Shout this message from the rooftops. You guys are all uh, woke, so they say. Your eyes have been opened. Blinders have been removed. And, um, oh, that's terrible, Tabitha. Yeah, suicide is absolutely from Satan, so I don't know how people could see those medicines that have side effects of suicidal thoughts and not know they're evil. But, yeah, I can't wait either. Love you, Monica. By the way, guys, Monica just joined this war on Pharmakia with me, and she is killing it, killing it. She is the, I believe, I have like 120 people on my team, and Monica has enrolled more people faster than anybody else on my team. She's killing it. Gifted, you are gifted for this war. I love it. All right, I knew you were gonna be a leader. I told you, God told me. <laughs> so awesome. All right, bye guys. Love you. May you be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. Bye.